فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Now inshallah ta'ala Now bi idhnillah al-karim we're going to go into dawabid al-takfir al-mutlaqi What is the dawabid al-sahih li man yukaffaru bihi wa man la yukaffaru bihi min al-a'mali Dawabid al-takfir principles regarding takfir al-mutlaq the unrestricted So inshallah ta'ala we're going to be more specifically be speaking about what is the correct principle for the one who is labeled a kafir and the one who is not in terms of their actions okay, specific to actions okay <clears throat> so here inshallah ta'ala we're going to be speaking about al hukmu ala amali min al a'mal any action okay any action from the actions there are the ruling being placed on it whether it be belief or speech or actions of the limbs that is kufr or it's not kufr for you to say today that this speech is kufr this statement is kufr this action is kufr you would need a textual evidence for it and remember this ya ikhwa ya akhawati my brothers and sisters memorize this and learn this al hukm ala amal min al a'mal any action it may be whether it be belief whether it be speech or whether it even be the action of the limbs doesn't matter saying that it's kufr or saying that it's not kufr it is babun tawqifiyun marji'uhu sam'u it goes back to a textual evidence the quran and the sunnah are the only ones who can label a action or a statement or a belief كفر لا مجال فيه لا مجال فيه للاجتهاد والنظر no one can do independent reasoning you can't say عالم عالم فلان ابن فلان made this action كفر أكبر so it's كفر أكبر no nor are you allowed to say um, this action is not كفر أكبر because scholar so and so said it's not كفر أكبر the issue of a takfir and placing kufr on something is babun tawqifiyun marji'uhu sab it goes back to the kitab and sunnah it is what we would call haqqullahi wa rasulihi it's Allah and his rights the rights of Allah and his messenger it's not for anybody else qadi iyad rahimahullah he says in his kitab al-shifa faslun fi bayani ma huwa min al-maqalat kufrun wa ma yutawakkafu aw yukhtalafu fihi وما ليس بكفر اعلم ان التحقيق هذا الفصل وكشف اللبس فيه مورد الشرع ولا مجال للعقل فيه this is what he says he mentions here the point that i just mentioned which is the issue of the statement that's kufr or the statement that isn't kufr he said no that the underlining point for this for many people's ambiguity and disputed arguments you just need to know that this matter is taken back to the Sharia. Does Allah make takfir on this issue? Does the Messenger make takfir on this issue? وَلَا مَجَالَ لِلْعَقْلِ فِي And using your rationality and your brain and saying, No, how could this not be takfir? Look what's happening. It's big. Just because you see it to be big, it doesn't make it kufr. What makes it kufr? قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ It's not how big you see it. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says إِنَّ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفِسْقَ أَحْكَامُ شَرْعِيَّةٌ لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ الَّتِي يَسْتَقِلُّ بِهَا الْعَقْلُ فَالْكَافِرُ مَنْ جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ كَافِرًا وَالْفَاسِقُ مَنْ جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَاسِقًا The labeling 
of somebody being a fasiq or a kufr. It's from the ahkam that is der derived and from the sharia. <clears throat> and it is not from the rulings which you take from a person's rationality, independent rationality, where he independently deducts this. He has no textual evidence for it. فَالْكَافِرُ A kafir is whoever Allah and his messenger make, a, make them a kafir. And a person is a fasiq, whoever Allah and his messenger make him a fasiq. Ibn al-Wazir, in his kitab al-Awasib wal-Qawasim, in the fourth volume, page 178, he says, إن التكفير سمعي محض لا مدخل للعقل فيه تكفير is textual logic and rationality has no place in this <clears throat> so what do we take from this looking at all of those textual evidences and the kitab and the sunnah you can then say this is kufr akbar you can. But if Allah and His Messenger haven't, and you looked at the textual evidence, it doesn't say that, you're not allowed to. No. Opposition of this religion is of two ways. If we say a person opposed the religion, how many ways can they oppose the religion? By two ways. Number one, the person is leaving off something that's legislated. That's an opposition of the deen. You're commanded to do something, you're leaving off. Are you with me? The second one is بِفِعْلِ مَحْضُورٍ Doing something that's prohibited from you. Can anyone think of anything else? Huh? Can anyone think of anything else? Anybody who goes against this religion has gone against it from one of two. The first one is Tarki mashru'in, you lift off something that's sanctioned and legislated by Allah. Or, bifi'li mahdhurin, you did something you're prohibited from and you're told to stay away from. Is there any other way a person can oppose a religion? It's one of those two. Anything you mention it will fall under one of those two. Are we, are we together? Now, the leaving of the legislated things are three sahih we're going in details when it comes to this issue of takfir right so leaving off is three either leaving off a belief that was a belief you had to have or leaving off a statement which is something you should have had or leaving off an action of the limbs Are we together? Let's go for the first one. As for leaving the belief, are we together sisters and brothers? As for leaving the belief, like everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us and the Prophet such as the six pillars of faith and the articles of faith, the six pillars of faith, or not believing or not believing that which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us, or not believing the obligation of the apparent salawat, for example, the person doesn't believe in the salah, he doesn't believe the the wajibat which are dahira, the external, he doesn't believe in them, he doesn't believe he has to fast, he doesn't believe he has to, or he doesn't believe the prohibition of the apparent prohibitions that the Sharia have stated, like zina, shurb al khamr, he doesn't believe that. Or shakafi, or the person is in a state of doubt. This person has left the fold of Al-Islam and this is based upon the evidences and the consents of this Ummah. Okay? Are we all together on the i'tiqad? I'tiqad is kufr akbar. The ulama by unanimous ijma' the adilla and the kitab and the sunnah show this and it's a consent, there's no discussion now. Sah? We, might, we now move on to the leaving of the speech. As for leaving of speech, is two types. Are we all together? As for leaving of speech, فَعَلَى قِسْمَيْنِ is two types. الْقِسْمُ الْأَوَّلِ The first type is that which if you leave, you become a kafir. 
Okay? And that is Anutku bi shahadatain, the utterance of the shahadatain. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If the person doesn't utter that, he doesn't want to say that, he wants to come into Islam, but he refuses to say the shahadatain, he's not a believer. Okay? He has to say this statement. He has to say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If he doesn't, he's not a Muslim, he's, he's a kafir. Are you with me? This is kufr bi ijma'. There's a consensus. There's no khilaf. Okay? And the evidence is, of course, they show that. Even if the person believes it in their heart, so he's saying in his heart, I believe that Allah. I believe Allah is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. And I believe Nabi Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Is he a kafir? But he doesn't want to say it. Is he a kafir? No, he's a kafir. He believes it in his heart. Like he refuses to say it. The saying and the believing have to be there. Both of them. Okay? Ibn Hazm Rahimullah said, Wamani Atakad al Imana bi Kalbihi. Anyone who believes the Iman in his heart, Walam Yantuk Bilisani, but he doesn't utter it with his tongue. Okay, do na taqiyatin. If he's doing that because he's scared, he's scared that the people around him are going to uh, harm him. So he doesn't say it. Fawa kafir. If he's not doing it for that reason, I mean there's no reason for him not to utter it. Fawa kafir, he's a kafir. And Allah Ta'ala with Allah and according to the Muslims. He's a kafir to Allah and he's a kafir to the Muslims. Even though he believes in his heart. Even though he basically believes externally. And this is whose who's way? Abu Talib. Abu Talib believed it in his heart. He didn't reject it. He believed the Prophet ﷺ. He believed Allah is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. He believed all that. But did he utter it? He refused to utter Abu Talib. And we talked about that. Second one is... The second one is It's a speech that if you leave off you're not kafir You're a sinner And this is all of the other obligatory statements that the person has to say with their tongue Such as if a person says to you Assalamu alaikum You have to respond What about if you don't respond and you don't say it? You're a kafir This leaving here is not kufr akbar, but the person is a sinner. It doesn't take him out of the fold of al Islam, but he's a sinner because Allah commanded you, Ida huyitum bi tahiyyatin, fahayu bi ahsana minha or uduha. You have to return this greeting. You were commanded to return the greeting. So what you've left off is an obligatory statement that you need, you had to come with. Also, calling to the good and prohibiting the evil. You saw a person drinking with their left. You can address this person. You chose to withhold this statement, you chose to say nothing. You're here a sinner because you left off the utterance. <laughs> Sahih? Are you with me? Also, what would fall under that is ta'alimu al-dali wa irshad al-jahili. Teaching the misguided one and educating the ignorant one. You're, you know there's a jahil people, you have the knowledge. You're just silent, you don't talk to them. You're a shaytan al-akhras, a mute shaytan. You're refusing to speak to them, you're refusing to educate them. All of this is, you're leaving off these speeches, you're a sinner, but you're not a kafir. Are we all together on that? Anyone who leaves off these speeches, they're not a kafir. The consensus of the ummah is connected on this. Are you with me? Anything after the shahadatain, ashadu la ilaha illallah, after the nutq shahadatain Everything else is not kufr akbar It's what? What is it? Huh? What is it? It can either be kufr asghar It can be a less than kufr asghar Are you with me? Very good Ibn Rajab says Rahimahullah ta'ala فَسَائِرُ خِصَالِ الْإِسْلَامِ الزَّائِدَةِ عَلَىٰ أَرْكَانِ الْخَمْسَةِ وَالدَّعَائِمِهِ إِذَا زَالَ مِنْهَا شَيْءٌ نَقَصَ الْبُنْيَانُ وَلَمْ يَنْهَدِ أصل البنيان بذلك النقص ابن رجب says anything after the five pillars of Islam anything after that if something is missing from you after the shahadatin it's missing from you your building is deficient the building is deficient but it doesn't collapse because the asal of the building is there which is the five pillars okay the roof can go if it wants you with me? Some of the windows and some of the parts can be broken down, but the pillars are holding the building. The building is still going to stand. It won't collapse. 
he says that. So the shahadatain is what? Nutq bi shahadatain is what? It's the asal. So if that's there, everything else is the building's collapsed, but you are not. Uh, the building is uh, uh, um, deficient and it's broken, but it's not fully collapsed. Okay? It hasn't fully collapsed. <coughs> are we all together on that? We're now going to move on to the third thing that a person can leave off, which is what? The actions, right? It's two types. The first one is Any action, the actions are two types. The first one is that which is disputed. There's a dispute if you leave it, whether you're going to be a kafir or not. Are we all together on that? No? So if you leave it, this one, there's a dispute. Scholars are disputing. Are you a kafir or are you not? There's a khilaf amongst Ahlul Sunnah. And this is what the scholars refer to the Mabani al Arba'a. Mabani al Arba'a. Or the four pillars of Al Islam. Why are we saying four pillars? Because the Shahadatain is in what? Is in Qawl, it's in speech. So the four remaining, there's a dispute. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Some Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a may takfir on the Salah, the Zakat, the Sawm, and the Hajj. If you leave any of them, you're a kafir. If you don't fast in the month of Ramadan, you're a kafir. If you don't pay Zakat, you're a kafir. If you don't go Hajj, you're a kafir. They use those evidence. Yeah? Because Allah said in the ayah, كُلُّ الطَّعَامِ كَانَ حِلَ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا مَا حَرَّمَ إِسْرَائِيلُ عَلَى نَفْسِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ تُنَزَّلُ التَّوْرَاءَ قُلْ فَأْتُوا بِالتَّوْرَاةِ فَاتْلُوهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ فَمَنِ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ قُلْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِعُوا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَمَا فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر ولله على الناس حج البيت الله has made obligatory upon the people حج after what they say ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر and anyone who disbelieves meaning he doesn't do حج he's a kafir that's what some of the scholars took from that are you with me brothers does that make sense so these four pillars, they're the khilaf amongst Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Okay? So it's not a belief of the khawarij. If somebody says to you, you've left Ramadan, it's Kufr Akbar to me. It's Qawl which is weak, but it's not, it's not khawarij belief. Okay? And nor is it Zakat. And nor is Hajj. And nor is Salah. Are you with me? وَلِذَارِكَ Shaykh al-Islam Taymiya said in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, Amal al-Fatawa al-Kubra, he says, وَلِهَذَا تَنَازَعَ الْعُلَمَاء في تكفير من يترك شيئا من هذه الفرائض الأربع بعد الإقرار بوجوبها. شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said ولهذا and because of that there is a dispute amongst the ulama whether you should make a takfir on the person who leaves off في تكفير من يترك شيئا من هذه الفرائض الأربع بعد الإقرار بوجوبها. Once I've affirmed the obligation of these four, if I leave it whether I be a kafir or not. They disputed. The ulama differed on this. Are you there? That's what Shaykh al-Sam Taymi said. Does that make sense? There's a dispute on that one. The second one is Matafaq alayhi ahlul sunnati ala adami takfiri bi tarkihi. Ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah. The second type is that which they agreed that it is not kufr if you leave it off. And it is every action after the pillars of al-Islam. It's every action after the four that we mentioned, after the Mabani al-Arba'ah. Are you with me? Are we all together? After the Mabani al-Arba'ah, after the five, four pillars. Are we all together? After the four pillars. Um, after these four pillars, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, all of them agree, ittifaq, that you can't make takfir on anybody. Anybody who makes takfir after these four mabani wal arba'ah is going against the ittifaq of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And scholars have transmitted ijma'at on this particular issue. Are we all together on that? And we did mention the ijma'at uh, previously before. We have, right? We have. Very good. 
Now we're going to go into the second type of opposition of the religion, right? Which is what? Fi'lul mahaburi, doing, doing what? Doing something which is, huh? Which is prohibited, right? Are we all together? How many types did we divide this into two? We divide it into two. When it comes to leaving off, I'm sorry, doing the prohibited. فَيَنْقَسِمُ إِلَىٰ قِسْمَيْنِ is categorized into two. The first one is مَا يَكُونُ مُكَفِّرًا بِالْتِفَاقِ Doing it is kufr akbar. Doing it is what? Kufr akbar. And it is any action that a person comes with that opposes the belief of Allah and His Messenger. Okay? It opposes what? The belief of Allah and His Messenger. Now this action which the person is doing, it can be connected to either the belief, it can either be connected to the person's statement he said, it can also be connected to an action on the limbs which the person came with. Are you there? This speech or belief or action has to be in direct opposition. It has to basically nullify directly and come towards this issue, which is belief of Allah and the Messenger and the submission of the heart of this, uh, towards this religion. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said clearly and categorically in his كتاب الصارم المصول على شاتم الرسول he said it page 524 ابن تيمية said ابن تيمية said فالكلام والفعل المتضمن لاستحقاق لاستخفاف والاستهانة والاستهانة مستلزم لعدم التصديق النافع ولعدم الانقياد والاستسلام فلذلك كان كفرا ابن تيمية said the speech and the action which consists of belittling and mocking, it necessitates the, the removing and getting rid of the true belief that the person should have had and the true submission that the person should have had. So because of that, it became kufr. Are you with me? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said it. Shaykh al-Islam, he said in his Majmu' al-Fatawa, فَإِنَّا نَعْلَمُ We know أَنَّ مَنْ سَبَّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Anyone who insults Allah and his messenger, طَوْعًا بِغَيْرِ كُرْهٍ He does it بِغَيْرِ كُرْهٍ without being forced to do it. Anyone who insults Allah and his messenger, he does it without being forced to do it. بَلْ مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ بِكَلِمَاتِ الْكُفْرِ طَائِعًا Rather, the one who speaks speeches of kufr, wanting to do so without being forced into it. وَمَنْ اسْتَهَزَأَ بِاللَّهِ And anyone who mocks Allah, وَآيَاتِ and the verses of Allah, وَرَسُولِهِ and his messenger, فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ He is a kafir, بَاطِنًا وَظَاهِرًا He is kafir externally and internally. Impossible. Fully gone. Because you can't have, you can't believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala and fully submit to Him, and say those statements. The second type of fi'l al doing the prohibited, is ما لا يكون مكفرا that which is not kufr بتفاق أهل السنة by consent of Ahl Sunnah, and this is the sins, the sins, okay, the sins. Uh, that doesn't oppose Aslul Iman, such as Zina, Shurbul Khamr, drinking Khamr, Sariqa, stealing, Uquq al Walidain, disobedient towards your parents, Akul Riba, eating Riba, Wagayriha, and other than it, from the sins that are out there, in which it doesn't take a person out of the fold of Al Islam. So we said the Fi'lul Mahdur, the prohibited things that a person does, is two types. That which is Mukafiran, a person becomes a kafir for doing it, and this is by consent. And it is every action that a person does which nullifies the belief of Allah and His Messenger. It nullifies it. 
This now can happen from a person's speech. Okay? It can also happen from a person's belief. It can happen based on somebody's statement that they say. Are you with me? So if we see a person insult Allah and His Messenger, this is an action. Okay? It's an action. We now know that this is kufr akbar. It opposes, this action opposes in totality the belief of Allah and His Messenger and the submission of the heart to the religion of Al-Islam. Are we all together? Kufr Akbar. So we independently make takfir of this person based on his action. So we don't say to him, do you believe in Allah and His Messenger? Do you submit to the religion of Al-Islam? When he insulted the Prophet and Allah, we don't ask him those questions. We already know he did. We already know he doesn't believe in Allah and His Messenger. We also know he doesn't what? He doesn't submit to the religion of Al-Islam because of these statements only comes from that. Are we all together? The second type which says min fi'l al-mahdhuri. Fi'l al-mahdhuri here means what? Fi'l al is that this action is prohibited. The person does it, but they don't become a kafir for doing it. And this is any action that a person does that doesn't oppose Aslul Iman. Okay? It doesn't oppose what? Aslul Iman. <coughs> this is one of the mabahith which we talked about is very important. Um, does everybody understand it? Everybody understands it. Now we're going to go into Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem The point that I mentioned which is Anybody who leaves off Any of the four pillars of Al-Islam After they have testified to the Shahadatain As you saw before I just slightly touched on a concept called At-Takfiru bil mabani al-Arba'a can you make takfir on somebody because they left a prayer? Or can you make takfir on somebody? Um, sorry, can you make takfir on somebody because they left a prayer and their zakat and the psalm and hajj? Okay, we touched on that. And we did say that this issue is a qawl held by the ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It's a view that you find Ahl Sunnah mentioned. And it's very well known as a tarku bi tarki ahadi mabani al arba'at al islam al arba'ati. This mas'ala now. All that it holds is a rajah and al marjuh. A rajah and marjuh. Meaning the stronger opinion and the weaker opinion. That's it. There's no right for you to come and say you're a kafir or you're a Muslim. None of that. Sorry, so you're a mubtadi or you're a Sunni, Salafi, Ahlu Sunnah. No, no. Anyone who takes this opinion, he's still within the realms of Ahlu Sunnah. And the one who takes this opinion, he's still within the realm of Ahlu Sunnah. But this opinion is raj and al marjuh. You're stronger and your opinion is just weak. That's the minimum that can be said. Huh? Are we all together now? So the Salaf, rahimahullah, they disputed and argued in regards to this issue. And this is the summary of their statements in this particular issue and it's five opinions. It's what? It's five opinions. The first view is that the person becomes a kafir for leaving any one of those four. Are you with me? Any of those four. Even Hajj, you become a kafir. The second opinion is, and before I mention the second opinion, this is one of the riwayat that's transmitted from Ahmed and Abu Bakr al-Khalal chose this. Ihda al-riwayati an Ahmed wa akhtaraha Abu Bakr ibn Abu Bakr al-Khalal. Khalal, he chose this opinion. Okay? And Ahmed ibn Hanbal, this is one of the statements that are transmitted to us regarding him. Number two. View number two. The person doesn't become a kafir for leaving any of them. As long as he comes with the iqrar, the belief of it. So he's not a kafir for leaving any of those. As long as he what? He affirms it though. So, he, so if he leaves the salah, he's not a kafir. If he leaves the zakat, he's not a kafir. 
If he leaves Sawm, he's not kafir. And if he leaves Hajj, he's not? He's not? Kafir. As long as he affirms it. This is the view held by many of the fuqaha. It's held by Abu Hanifa, Al-Imam Malik, rahimahullah, Al-Imam Shafi'i, and it's one of the riwayat of Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed, and Ibn Battah, Ibn Battah, he chose this. The third, the third view is the person doesn't become a kafir except leaving the prayer. That's the only one he becomes a kafir for. Are we all together? So the third one, the third, the third one is لا يكفر إلا بترك الصلاة. And this is the view of many of the Salaf. Are you with me? And it's also the view held by many of the followers of um, Imam Malik, many of the followers of Al Imam al Shafi'i, and also many of those who follow the view of Imam Ahmed. Rahimahullah ta'ala. The fourth, fourth view regarding this issue is that the person becomes a kafir for leaving the salah and the zakat only. The person becomes a kafir. The person becomes a kafir for leaving the salah and the zakat only. Number five. The person, he becomes a kafir for leaving the salah and leaving the zakat if the leader fights with him on this. He's not a kafir if he just leaves it. But if he reaches the court and the leader says, I'm going to fight with you for it. And he's stubborn, he says, no, I'm not going to pray. He's a kafir. These views and these statements there are ta'ifah min salaf There are salaf who said this. And they are all views that have been transmitted from Imam Ahmed. Are we all together? All of those five views, they are riwayat an Imam Ahmed. They are opinions that are transmitted to us from Imam Ahmed. Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Rajab both transmitted the statement. Go to the seventh volume, page 610. Seventh volume of Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah's Majmu' al-Fatawa. Seventh volume, page 610. And Hafiz ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he has a sharh on Sahih al-Bukhari, which he called it Fatuh al-Bari. Go to the first volume, page 23. Both of them have transmitted this. That Shaykh al-Islam, that Imam Ahmed said this. Are you with me? So these are views that have come from who? Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Al Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. After observation, after looking at the evidences and the proofs, the strongest opinion that stands to me, Abdul Rahman Hassan, is the third view, which is if a person leaves off the prayer, the kafir. He leaves the fold of Al-Islam. And as for the remaining other three, as long as he affirms them, that they are obligatory on him, if he leaves it, he's not a kafir. But his iman is very low. وَيُخْشَى لَهُ We fear for him. Now we're going to bring the evidences to prove this. To say that these other three are not Kufr Akbar. And we'll do that inshaAllah ta'ala next week bi idhnillahil kareem. Anything which I have said wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.